Hello, welcome to SBTV News. I'm Samira Ibrahim with today's bulletin. But first, the major headlines. Governor Bello Mohamed Matawali wins Best Governor of the Year on Security and Humanitarian Services. President Buhari strongly condemns bandit attack on Kasena School. 20 generals test positive for COVID-19. SGF in isolation. On business, federal government begins building of 300,000 houses this week. On sport, Ronaldo scores twice on 100 Juventus appearance and on the international scene. U.S. Electoral College set to confirm Biden win as Trump refuses to concede. Now on the news in details. Governor Bello Mohammed Matawalem Maradin has again won the Best Governor Award for the year 2020 on security and humanitarian services by the Access Weekly magazine. A Lagos-based magazine published by a renowned veteran journalist, Mr. Sola Olubemiro. The governor was represented at the event by his special advisor on media, public enlightenment and communications, Malian Zailani Bappa, at a ceremony which held at the LCCI Conference and Gardens, a Lausa area of Ikeja, Lagos State. Governor Matawali was honored along with Lagos State Governor Babajide Sanwo Ulu, the Inspector General of Police IGP Muhammad Adamu and many Nigerians who distinguish themselves in different fields of their chosen career. For more details on this story, Rahma Ibrahim Dwesara reports. In his acceptance speech, Governor Matawali sued for a collective approach in addressing the security challenges facing the country, especially the northern region, and advised leaders at all levels to stop apportioning blames on one another. He noted that security issues should always be seen and treated as everybody's business that calls for a more coordinated approach that is holistic and genuine in order to take it to a logical end and make the country safe and more conducive for investment, development and progress. The governor added that governments at all levels should do more in terms of youth engagement to become self-sufficient and reliant through various skills acquisition, trades and employment. Governor Matawa Lafada attributed his administration's success in the area of security to the social intervention programs and other employment opportunities created by his administration, which have continued to yield positive results. Earlier while presenting the award to the governor, Mr. Dada Daly said the Access Weekly magazine decided to honor Governor Matawa this year's Collegium and award 2020 as a result of improvement recorded, particularly in the area of security, which bedeviled Zamfara State and the nation at large. That has been the report. Drama Ibrahim Dosa reporting for SVTV News. The Command Science Secondary School Girls go south. On Saturday, graduated another batch of its students at a colorful ceremony at the school premises. Those who graduated were 33 SS3 students and 54 JSS3 students. The graduates performed a colorful passing out parade as part of the activities marking the graduation ceremony that was led by Maria Ibrahim Dusara. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for this left and right turn. Can we give a round of applause for the passing out girls? Other activities that took place were drama, dancing competition, among others. President Muhammad Buhari strongly condemned the bandit attack at the Government Science Secondary School, Kankara, in Katsina State, charging the army and the police to go after the attackers to ensure that no student get missing or harmed. The president urged the school authorities to carry out an audit of the population of the students following shootings in and around the school that sent hundreds of them fleeing and scrambling over perimeter walls. Parents who rushed to the school and removed their children and wards were also required to notify the school and police authorities in order to have a full account of the school population, 
For more details on this story, open on to our correspondent, Peter Phillips. Meanwhile, the governor of Castina State, Aminu Bello Masari, on Saturday, ordered the immediate closure of all modern secondary schools in the state, following the adoption of many students by gunmen in Kankara local government area. The governor gave the directive while visiting the council area where gunmen abducted an unspecified number of students of the Government Science Secondary School Kankara on Friday. The situation goes beyond one's thinking. In a related development, the Minister of Defense, Major General Bashib Magashi, retired, has given an assurance that all the schoolboys missing in Kassina State will return home. He gave the assurance on Sunday when he led a delegation of federal government, including the service chiefs, to Kassina to sympathize with the parents and teachers of the victims, as well as the state government, over the abduction. Peter Phillips reporting for SVTV News, Guso. The military has announced that a group of Boko Haram terrorists embarked on a failed mission on Saturday in an attempt to attack Askira over local government area of Borno State in northeast Nigeria. The Deputy Director of Public Relations, 7th Division of the Nigerian Army in Medjugorje, Colonel Adu Isa, confirmed this incident in a statement on Sunday. He noted that the terrorists, who were suspected to have come from the Sambisa Forest, approached the town from different directions, simultaneously on over 15 gun trucks. They were, however, prevented from entering the town by the troops of 28th Tax Force Brigade of Sector 1 of Operation Lafia Dole, who engaged the criminals with superior firepower. Troops recovered gun trucks and motorcycles from Boko Haram terrorists during an operation conducted in the Northeast on December 12, 2020. During the fierce battle, a soldier died with two others injured, while the terrorists suffered huge losses in men, materials and equipment. The People's Democratic Party, PDP, in Lagos State, has prayed for speedy recovery of Governor Sanwo Olu, who tested positive to the coronavirus disease. PDP's Publicity Secretary, Taufik Ghani, said in a statement on Sunday that the governor needed to get well soon because residents of the state were expecting more from his administration. According to him, such wish at this time is religious, constructive, progressive, and particularly to charge the governor to get back on his feet soonest. In the opinion of the Lagos State PDP, the state is in desperate need of a standing governor to attend to the numerous areas of developmental needs. There is almost no room for any abdication of duties at this time. He stated that the state cannot afford to be in suspense as to the health status of the governor. Legotians will not accept some form of reasons as an alibi for non-performance. Controversy continues to trail the death of General Irifin, General Officer Commanding 6th Division of the Nigerian Army, Patakot, a cogested born Nigerian Army General. The Ayetoro Bede people in Kogi State have rejected the claims by the military authorities that their kinsman, the late Major General Olubimi Irefi, died of COVID-19 related complications. They have therefore vowed to investigate the real cause of his death. Their rejection was contained in a statement signed on behalf of the Ayetore Bede Traditional Council and the Ayetore Development Association on Saturday by Chief A. E. Aminu. Senator Dino Malai, who is from the town, confirmed the authenticity of the press statement when contacted. Aminu said he issued the statement on behalf of the Olu of Ayetore Bede, Obadi as a Hindu, the Ayetoro Development Association, and the Ayetoro Bede Traditional Council. The late general was pronounced dead by the military authorities on December 10, 2020, as a result of COVID 19. About 20 generals have reportedly tested positive for COVID-19. About one week after the death of the General Officer Commanding 6th Division, Patakot River State, Major General John Irifin, who died of complications from the disease. The infected military officers were believed to have had contact with the deceased during the Chief of Army Staff Annual Conference 2020 in Abuja last week. The conference was cancelled following Irifin's passage and the participants, including the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukov Yusuf Buratai, 
the Minister of Defense Bashir Magashi and GOCs from nearly all the army divisions nationwide were directed to go on self-isolation. For more details on this story, over now to our correspondent, Musa Joy. Following the development, the Chief of Army Staff did not attend the wedding of his son in Abuja on Friday. Newsmen gathered on Sunday that some of the infected GOCs and principal officers were being treated at the COVID-19 isolation center, University of Abuja Teaching Hospital, Gogolada, Abuja. Some of the patients were also being quarantined at other isolation centers in the Federal Capital Territory. The development, it was learned, has sparked panic among top military brass who had yet to take the COVID-19 test. A source said the report is true as it was learned that about four generals who have tested positive and have been treated for the disease. Meanwhile, the secretary to the government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, had gone into self-isolation after some members of his household tested positive for COVID-19. Boss Mustafa, who is also the chairman of the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19, made this known in a statement. The statement was titled, Some members of SGF's household tested positive to COVID-19. Still on COVID-19, the Nigerian Center for Disease Control has confirmed 418 new cases of COVID-19 in the country. This brings to 73,175 confirmed cases recorded in Nigeria, while 66,090 were treated and discharged, and 1,197 deaths were recorded. Mosa Joy Onyoza, SVTV News, Kuso. Operatives of the police in Delta State have arrested the chairman, Patani Local Government Council, Mr. Ferez Omon, for allegedly destroying property belonging to the Commissioner for Power and Energy, Basil Ganagana. Mr. Oman was alleged to have destroyed several vehicles and the main gates into the home of Basil Ganagana in Asaba, the state capital. It was gathered that the incident which occurred Sunday created panic among residents of the area. It was learned that policemen drafted from the GRA division brought the situation under control. Ganagana, who hails from Patani local government area, is a former speaker of Delta State House of Assembly. It was learned that the attack on the home of the commissioner left a driver attached to the commissioner injured. Mr. Oman was arrested by policemen from GRA Divisional Office Asaba after breaking into the private residence of the commissioner on Sunday morning with his Lexus SUV. Let me quickly take you to our business text for the business update. Welcome to Business Desk. The Senior Special Assistant to the Vice President of Media and Publicity, Laulu Akande, on Sunday disclosed that the federal government plan to build 300,000 affordable houses for Nigerians will start this week. The houses will be built under the social housing element of the Government Economic Sustainability Plan. In a statement titled About 20 State Indicate Interest, in economic sustainability plan, plans to build 300,000 houses for Nigerians at about 2 million naira each. Mr. Kande said about 20 state government had indicated interest in joining the housing plan. This week, the portal to invite Nigerians interested either as beneficiaries of the social housing or as delivery partners would be launched by the Family Homes Fund the federal government agency designated to implement the scheme. Mr. Kandisel, the state government and the federal capital territory had expressed interest and support in the program, had offered free lands for the construction of the houses. He added that the scheme would provide houses at low prices between 1.8 million naira and 2 million naira. The presidential aid list of the state that had shown interest to include Oshun, Ogun, Enugu Delta, Bauchi, Kebi, Nasrawa Plateau, and the Federal Capital Territory. 
he saw the first set of construction sites had been indicated in the named state. He added that there are also others like Abia, Anambra, Eboing, Imu, Cross River, Sokoto, Kaduna, Zamfara, Kasina, Borno, and Yobe states that are now working towards joining in a similar vein. And that's all on Standard Voice Business Update. Back to the newsroom. Thank you, Musa Joy. On spot, over to Fawzia Ibrahim. Cristiano Ronaldo marked his 100th game for Juventus with a pair of penalties in a 3-1 success over Genoa on Sunday, as the champions close the gap on Serie A leaders AC Milan. Paolo Dybala got his first league goal for the season in the 57th minute, and Ronaldo sealed the point with two late strikes from the spot after Stefano had levelled for the host after an hour. The potatoes forward strikes have taken him level with AC Milan star Zlatan Ibrahimovic as leading scorer in Serie A with 10 goals. Champions Juventus move up to fourth in the table, equal on points with third place Napoli after just their second league win away from home this season. Both Juventus and Napoli are three points behind AC Milan who host Parma later on Sunday. Coach Andrew Pilo said they Bala needed this goal to unlock mentally and physically. And that's all on the spot update. I'm Fazer Ibrahim. Have a nice day. And on the international scene. A vote on Monday by members of the Electoral College to formally recognize Joe Biden as the next U.S. president has taken on unusual import this year with Donald Trump stubbornly refusing to admit defeat. The result of the November 3rd vote have been certified by each of the 50 states and the District of Columbia. The Democrats won with record 81.3 million votes or 51.3 percent of those cast to 74.2 million and 46.8 percent for the Republican president. But in the United States, the occupant of the White House is chosen by indirect universal suffrage, with each state allocating its electors, whose numbers are essentially based on population to the candidate who carried the state. The results confirm an easy victory to Biden, with 306 of the 538 electoral votes to 232 for Trump, with 270 required for election. Electoral College members meet Monday to formalize the process, though the electors actually meet separately in each state. Biden will then deliver a speech in the evening to celebrate the latest confirmation of his win and the strength and resilience of U.S. democracy, a clear job that trumps unprecedented stance. That has been the news from Standard Voice Television. To end the news, a quick look at the major headlines. Governor Bello Muhammad Matawali wins Best Governor of the Year on Security and Humanitarian Services. President Buhari strongly condemns bandit attack on Katsina School. 20 general states positive for COVID-19, SGF in isolation. On business, federal government begins building of 300,000 houses this week. On sports, Ronaldo scores twice on 100 Juventus appearance and on the international scene. U.S. Electoral College set to confirm Biden win as Trump refuses to concede. That's the news. On behalf of the production crew, Head of News and Current Affairs Department, Ibrahim Garabatuno, I am Samira Ibrahim, wishing you a pleasant day. Keep watching Standard Voice Television News. Goodbye.